Hold a second, Lana. Um, you're a little quiet. Any better? Uh, still pretty quiet. I'm also not talking very loud, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hate to be yelling at people. <laughs> no, I um, I put in our, our 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 one person right now into the waiting room so we could talk. Um, Perfect. I see that. I, I I figured out that I can just disable the waiting room when we're done, like when we start, so that people who come in will just automatically be put um, in. So that gives the the presenter some time to hang out and and talk without being the like. We understand there's participants, but we're going to talk anyway. <laughs> That's true. Yep. Me and Mary Liz had a whole conversation about the weather with people on. We didn't care. About <laughs> we're like, welcome. Like, what's it doing up there or over there? <laughs> Fair enough. Well, yep. especially for 15 minutes out, I'm like, eh, I was surprised there was even a person on. Of course there is. I feel like there's always a super early. We've probably been sitting there like since 9 30 or something. That's fine. <laughs> Rather be early than late, so yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. see. But yeah, I was looking at that email chain, and I'm like, I'm glad Mary Liz sent that to me. I'm like, I'm okay. I'm like, do they realize that you weren't on that either? <laughs> That's okay. Oh well. I don't know. Oh well, we got it. <laughs> we got it. It's yeah. Just anyway. Yeah. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the day that I need two screens. Oh, I know. That's one thing I love about my, my main office. That I love my two screens. Oh, let me. Ugh, no, I don't feel like playing with that today. But I was like, I have my laptop, so I, in theory, I could oh, extend the screen from my laptop to my monitor, but I don't feel like messing with that. So <laughs> I will close that. I will close. I will reopen my Outlook that I tried to close earlier. Everyone's gonna read your email. That's what's in here. I mean, <laughs> exciting stuff in there. I know that's kind of what I feel like. I'm like, they see it. Well, it's nothing too too riveting. <laughs> oh. And I don't know. Is there? I'm looking at your screen, and there's a grid. I don't know. Does that go away when you go into presentation mode? Uh, let's find out. Okay. Yes, yeah. it does. Okay, yeah. good. I, I must have a grid um, checked as a setting somewhere. Sure, that's kind of what I figured. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Okay, and I've got those first three slides, so make sure I had the university stuff. Yeah, I do. Okay, good. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so got to remind. Uh, well, that's probably why it will actually be better, maybe, for you to do that reminder about the survey, oh, yeah. so that I don't have to open up my email. <laughs> Sure, sure. If you want to do it, um, once we get through the questions, so when you put up that last slide, I'll, because I've got um, Kristen's bio for her class coming up, so I can do that last slide, the last nice. two. Yeah. yeah. Talking about extending wellness. <laughs> yeah. And I, I guess um, what order, I didn't think about that, um, should I put the texting program after the next webinar? I can switch now. Um, no, I'd leave it as is. I think I do extending, doing the extending, and then I'll do the what's coming next. Okay. Because then once you get to use your resources, then you can ask about maybe questions. Well, then is that before we get into the last yeah, kind of my, like ending point? Right. People have questions that we need to answer, and I love the puppies. I love that picture. It makes me happy. <laughs> oh, and and let's let's let me make sure the video works. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, look at them. Oh, <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> really, it's little things right now. <laughs> I agree. Yes, I don't know what your um, region meeting will be like, but ours was a lot of mental health stuff yesterday, which was nice. Yeah, um, yeah I think challenge. the first hour, what I'm missing is all webinar tips, tricks, using Zoom, <laughs> and then we're going, we're doing like team stuff. Like they're splitting us into teams and we joked, we're like, so there's three of us on our team because Jenna's out. 
So, oh I yeah. <laughs> I don't really know how that's gonna go, but yeah, that's I know that's what the afternoon is is a bunch of team stuff. Like they're gonna bust us into teams, and I don't know if we're doing maybe mental health discussion. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, all our I'm just happy teams. to miss the first hour. <laughs> You're like, I teach this stuff. I, if I don't know it by now. Well, I got, like, I'm always learning something, but I'm like, the, I learn best by doing. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think our breakouts yesterday must have just been like a random assortment because mm -hmm. I had different people every time. Oh, I hope that's the way it is. So it's not which, just me. Which Susan. was nice. Cause, <laughs> Kristen. Uh, I was like, okay, I, I know this name. I can picture the face, but I don't know what your position. Like, it, it was, it was right. nice to um just kind of figure it out yeah well I even have like I had Lisa Lincoln reach out to me because my name was in the FYI for getting promoted and she she emailed, she calls me on Skype I've never met her in person <laughs> but her maiden name was Peterson oh, so, funny. and she kept trying to set me up with her son she's like my son is single I'm like oh my god <laughs> she's like you can have another Lisa Lincoln I started laughing <laughs> Oh, too funny. Uh, a laugh yeah. of, please stop, please yeah, stop. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, but yeah, yeah, that was pretty entertaining. Man. Like, uh, she called me, like, I don't know who this is, but I'll talk to you. Hello. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. I mean, at least I got 10 minutes. So. Well, that's our, our one of our 4 H educators. She um, got married. So she's Trinity Johnson and her husband his last name is also Johnson and so the joke was like should she hyphenate and be Trinity Johnson Johnson <laughs> Trinity Johnson squared <laughs> oh that's fun <laughs> there we go let's just add some math into it <laughs> so do you have you guys have two 4-H educators is that right yeah we have um you have Jane. it used to be the old metro position so Decatur okay. is we have one person to do that and then we have uh, one other educator to do do it in Piat, so more okay. of a rural. Okay, nice. Yeah, because I knew because I didn't know Jamie had joined your guys' unit. I'm like, oh, I'm like yeah, that was yeah, like two years ago. She's like, wow. been here two years, maybe. <laughs> That's what um, our four H educator said. I'm like, yeah, she moved like two, three years ago. I'm like, oopsie. Well, I'm not up to. I'm like, I follow her. I'm, I'm friends with her on Facebook, and we've done a couple committee stuff together. But no, didn't even think about it. Yeah, no, because I was talking to her last week sometime, and I was saying. Oh, because I forget what we were talking about, but I brought up you because you had the, oh, your 4-H partnership and the meal kits. Oh, yeah, yeah. Went. And she, and I was telling her, oh, yeah, my, my counterpart down, you know, south of me. Yep. And said, oh, Lisa. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know you guys knew each other. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We did the, we did the 4-H app, or we're still doing the 4-H app together, the cooking app. That, mm -hmm. Whenever that comes out. My <laughs> jokes, I'm like, right. every time I bring it up, we randomly hear about it. So. <laughs> oh. Oh man, contract issues is what I've heard. So. What else is new? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, it'll come out eventually. We got all the video, or at least for, for Cooking 101, we got all the videos done. But. And that's, that's no small task either. So that's No, that was a fun time. It was like, I think it was five or six of, or maybe four or five of us from Nutrition and Wellness who went up there two summers ago. I don't know, something like that. Went up to campus. Yeah, I heard from Jamie that it was kind of a like rush to get it all done. <laughs> yep, and then yeah, we had to film these videos for like two days or something. Yeah, and then we're supposed to do cooking too when we were supposed before COVID, and then but I'm like we filmed them all and we still have yet to see any kind of like results from the film filming. But sure. We had so much food. Everybody brought home like a bag of food. <laughs> I bet all those cooks or cookies and biscuits. <laughs> Well, and that's why Jamie called me last week was she had this um, idea about doing a virtual cooking program like in January um, around pressure cookers. And then that transitioned into, well, we should just turn some of the 101 to 401 cookbook recipes into pressure canner or pressure cooker oh, yeah. recipes. And so we got a call this afternoon, I think, to, to talk about which ones are going to be. Nice. Uh, the, the thought was, hey, it's Christmas and maybe people will be getting gifts because I don't know how many times I teach that lesson. People are like, yeah, it's been sitting in my cabinet since I got it as a gift. I haven't opened it. So. Yes. Yep. That's how I start the class. I'm like, who here has it collecting dust in the back of her cabinet? <laughs> oh, man. 
Yeah, I talked to, I mentioned on the team call yesterday, and I haven't sent, I just sent an email to Mary Liz because I was talking to her, but I talked to Jennifer right before our team call, and she had said, she shockingly brought up a holiday, doing a holiday series. I'm like, somebody who's told us again and again and again not to do holiday stuff, she's like, it'd be fun if you guys did like three 30-minute boosters, <laughs> holiday boosters, and like really short webinars. I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm like, that's what you want us to do? <laughs> so I don't know. I'm I'm sure we can do a better job than the camping webinar I sat in on for about 15, it was a half an hour, yep. like outdoor cooking, I think it was geared to like 4-H, um, okay. and I'm like, this is, I, I forget which extension it was, I'm like, this, is, this would be interesting, why don't I you know, jump on one, oh god, the speaker was so just very monotone, oh, and no. Oh, it was, it was bad. I only got through about 15 minutes before I'm like, and I'm done. <laughs> That's so. the worst when, especially on webinar, because they've got to be engaging. Otherwise you're, yeah, you're falling asleep or you're not paying attention. That, or like me, I've got two things going on at once. <laughs> 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 they turn into podcasts for me a lot of times, these webinars. There you go. <laughs> but, yeah, so I don't know. I'm like, and the team, I guess I had to hop off to another call, but then they're like, well, we just want to do because Susan stayed on and it was Diane, Kristen and Susan talked and they're like, well, maybe we'll just do supplements. I'm like, well, maybe a few, of, it doesn't have to be the entire team. Maybe if a few of us put together a three session series in December or something where they're 30 minutes short and out that, I don't know. I'm like, we'll come back and visit, revisit it. So I understand it is a lot of work, but I'm like, my December is pretty free right now. So I'm happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, what, that's what I did with um, a dietitian in my county. We did mm -hmm. a we set it up to be 30 minutes, um, yep. Tuesdays and Fridays. The Tuesday one was an evening, so 5.30 to 6. The Friday ones were gonna be 11.30 to noon. And we only ended up doing one in the series because we didn't get a lot of people to sign up, but sure. it was 30 minutes. They could pick up a meal kit from the hospital. Oh, cool. Um, and like the theory was they could be cooking while they listened to us talk for 30 minutes. Ah, um, yeah. And like, it, it was great. We only had like three people on the call, but it was, you know, it went really quickly. We just talked about fall produce and we yeah. could cook and. Well, and that's what I even told Jennifer. I'm like, it'd be fun to do things like cooking for, cause we're trying to keep COVID guidelines. It'd be like cooking for less people and talking about how to reuse leftovers and even doing a short comfort food makeover. Like some of these holiday things that, um, that is, yeah. So I don't well, know. And, and, and I, and, and maybe that wasn't the word she used, but she, if she said fun, that makes me go like, um, Jennifer, we're not here to entertain. We're here to <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> exactly. We're here to educate. I think it's the way we market it, which she was getting at that. Sure. So, but and and yeah. I don't and I don't think she meant it that way, but no, I no, hear no. that word and I'm just like, uh, we don't right. do like <laughs> Yeah, we don't we're not here oh. for entertainment. You are correct. <laughs> yeah. And not that that class can't be entertaining, but that's not our purpose. <laughs> Especially when things go awry, that tends to get pretty entertaining. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so I don't know. I could, I told her when I was talking to her, I'm like, I just imagine Susan in her, um, the state of the art kitchen they have wearing a Santa hat and preparing a meal, or preparing uh, a yeah. demo. <laughs> like for some reason, that's the first thing that comes to my head. I'm like, yep, I see it. Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Well, we're, we're at four minutes. You want to open the waiting room and sure I'll let you I don't know how to let people in I've never used a waiting room before oh there's an admit all button okay. yeah there's well and then I just if I check the disabled waiting room everyone should be able to come in okay I admit all of them now All right, welcome everybody. We're gonna get going here in about four minutes or so. Should we do the where are you in the country question? Yeah, <laughs> that's a great idea. So if you want to put in the chat box where you're located at today. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. 
Nice. We're kind of all <laughs> over the place. Yeah. yeah. Milk Center of America. Ooh. Hi, Monica. You're in my area. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Hello from, from New York. Yeah, awesome. hello from New York, man. Yeah, I got a little bit of sunshine on my commute and then it was gone. So. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cloudy here too with that cooling down. I love it. I'm the true, my Minnesota roots never leave me. I love the cold. <laughs> It's yes. not well liked in my community, but I love the gold. <laughs> so. One of our 4-H educators is uh, from Louisiana. And so the minute it got chilly out, she definitely uh, was putting on the coats. And I think the rest of us Illinoisans were like, yeah, we can go a little longer. <laughs> so I'm sure you could go even longer without. Awesome. <laughs> I'm probably just down the street from you in Hillsboro. <laughs> <laughs> and are you are you recording lisa yep it records the minute i pop on awesome <laughs> no we're not gonna have to re-record no panic here <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> And have we been doing videos on or off lately? Um, we've been leaving them off, but just to make it a little easier for the recording. Sure. I know when I've done recordings with my video, it's just this tiny little face in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is sometimes nice. It's nice to see that the speaker has a face. <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> Yeah, I looked over at my office phone and it says 1008. It's it's always fast. Oh dear. All right. Well, we are at 10 o'clock. So welcome everybody. This is our third of our Managing Diabetes in a Modern World webinar series by University of Illinois Extension. Um, it, like I said, it's 10 o'clock, so we're gonna get going. Before we do, please make sure that your microphone is muted to prevent any background sound during the presentation and make sure your camera is turned off so we have a really strong bandwidth today so we don't lose anybody. Um, all of our webinars so you just heard are being recorded and will be available on our website in about a week. Um, that website, and I'll put it in the chat box too, is go.illinois.edu backslash nutrition well. If you scroll down on that page, you'll be able to see previous recordings as well of webinars. Um, once I hand over the presentation, like I said to uh, Caitlin, then I'll make sure I get that in the chat box. We do encourage you to ask questions as well throughout the presentation. And I'll make sure Caitlin addresses them at the end today. Okay, so for those who don't know, the University of Illinois Extension is our flagship effort of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We offer research-based educational programs to residents of Illinois in all 102 counties and far beyond that. Okay, so I put a name to a face here. My name is Lisa Peterson and I'm your moderator today. I'm, also, I'm a nutrition and wellness educator with the University of Illinois Extension. I work in Christian, Jersey, McCoupin and Montgomery counties in West Central Illinois. And now your presenter is Caitlin Mellendorf. She's a registered dietitian and a nutrition and wellness educator and she serves in DeWitt, Macon and Payette counties in Central Illinois. Caitlin completed her education through Illinois State University undergraduate and Eastern Illinois University graduate dietetic program. Um, she enjoys teaching hands-on cooking classes and seeing participants discover new foods and cooking skills. Alrighty, and with that, I'm gonna hand it on over to Caitlin. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so welcome everyone. And fortunately, Lisa has control over the chat box because I currently have just one monitor. So really all I can see today are the slides. Um, so we are here to talk about your diabetes resources. And I would really like this to be interactive throughout our presentation today. So um, to start off, if you are willing to share 
um, please write in the chat box um, why you are here today. So if you have had diabetes for 15 years or if you maybe have a family history um, at risk, um, let us know in the chat box if you're comfortable doing that. It'd be great to see all of our community members on today participating and sharing um, just to learn about each other um, and what, what health things they have. So our lessons today are all about diabetes resources. And I'm gonna start by breaking that down into your level of risk. So if you have maybe a family history of diabetes or you have been told you have prediabetes, if you're maybe a newly diagnosed diabetic um, or excuse me, person with diabetes or you've had it for years and years and years, um, welcome to all. And we'll talk about different education options uh, for each of those levels of diagnosis. And then we're gonna go through a variety of free and low cost resources that uh, you can use. And probably I'm hoping um, some resources that you have already used before. So to start out, if you are at risk of diabetes, so if you have family history or you have been told that you have prediabetes, I really recommend finding one of the 58 recognized programs in Illinois for the National Diabetes Prevention Program, or DPP. This is a CDC curriculum, uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And this is generally a one year long program to introduce people who have prediabetes to lifestyle changes, diet information, fitness information, to hopefully prevent that shift from prediabetes into diabetes. And so generally in the first half of that program, the first six months, you're spending a lot of time with your coach and your group. So generally in the first six months, you meet 16 times. And then in the last six months, you generally meet just about one time per month. And I know from talking with, actually we have uh, one of our partners here that I talked with last, last week, uh, he got a diagnosis of prediabetes and he knows Illinois Extension, we work with him frequently. And he said, oh, that's, you know, it's good to know. And he had taken the resource that I'll actually share next, but he found out that our local YMCA was offering the DPP. And so he went and attended that class and he started his uh, A1C at, I think he said 6.3%. And when he went back after the DPP participated, program that he participated in, he was down to, I think he said 5.8. So he did really well. He really improved his health. Um, and he said he was so grateful that we have these local resources. Um, so the DPP, check out your local hospitals. Some of them are through there. The YMCA, at least in my area, had it presented. I know that um, Sometimes you might see clinics offer them or health departments, um, but check out and see where those programs exist. So if this is something that you have gotten that prediabetes diagnosis, jump in here um, and this is gonna be a great program to kick off uh, your understanding about what diabetes is and how to prevent it. So has anyone attended a DPP program? Um, tell us in the chat box maybe where you attended it. So was it through your hospital? Was it through a local agency? Um, let us know if you've attended a DPP program before. And then while you're typing in the chat box, um, I'm gonna do a shameless plug for our curriculum that we have at Illinois Extension. So we have our Eating to Reduce the Risk of Diabetes online course. It is free, it is online, it is self-paced. It takes about 30 minutes to go through and it's a really nice introduction to what is diabetes, um, how do you diagnose it, or what kind of symptoms and risk factors there are around diabetes. And then it goes through some of the diet uh, involvement. So how does your blood sugar or your blood glucose change based on, um, oh, excuse me, I didn't mean to click that, based on um, the foods that you eat and helping you make healthier decisions. Um, the URL is up here on the screen. Um, so it'll take you right to the registration page and you can go do that on your own time. There's no 
a requirement for finishing it in, in a certain time. So whenever you have that time and you're ready to do the course, this is a great introduction one to do. Um, as well, there is a handout that we will have with this presentation. So when you are done, I know uh, towards the end of the presentation, Lisa will talk a little bit more about how we'll get the print materials to you. So if you don't write this down right now, don't worry, it'll be available to you um, a little bit later. And if anyone has done this course already, um, let me know. That would be interesting to see if anyone on our call today is, has joined in this uh, self-paced course already. Now, if you have already been diagnosed with diabetes and it's something that's new to you, so maybe within the first year of being diagnosed, I recommend going and signing up for the American Diabetes Association's program called Living with Type 2 Diabetes. I know when I first started in extension, this was a print program so that you would enter in your mailing address and you would get the materials delivered to you through your mail. I think as far as I can tell now, everything is a digital format. So you get uh, six booklets uh, digitally, you get a monthly newsletter, you get uh, access to your peers who have diabetes with the ADA's online community support group. And then you get invitations to join in with Q and A's with uh, diabetes experts. And the goal of this, the reason why we recommend this within that first year of being diagnosed is that this is a massive change to your lifestyle, to your, um, just to your, your person. And so we want to give you some resources to slowly introduce you to what this means for your current health, your future health, how to manage it, how to find supports um, so you can learn how to live better with diabetes. If anyone has already participated and gotten some of these resources, um, again, let me know in the chat box if you've, if you've received these materials before. They are available in both English and Spanish. Um, so if you if you um, want to order this, maybe even for someone else that you know who has a recent diagnosis with diabetes, it actually provides that option too. So you don't have to be the person who has diabetes to order these materials. Um, and they, these are all free as well. So these are, these are great resources to use. Now, the next couple of slides are gonna get a little bit in depth, so I appreciate your patience. Uh, we're gonna try and work through this fairly easily, but um, again, if you have questions in the chat box, let me know as we go through. So again, if you have been diagnosed with diabetes, preferably in the first year, um, we recommend going for what is called Diabetes Self-Management Education and Training, or DSMET. And what this is, is it provides 10 hours of education within 12 months. And so this is why uh, we recommend that you talk with your primary care provider or your medical doctor um, to get a referral to go have education for DSMET. So generally you get one hour individual appointment one-on-one -on -one with your diabetes educator and then the rest of your nine hours are in group education, except if group education is not available in your area, in which case you can do the, the rest of your nine hours one-on-one -on -one with your diabetes educator. The trick here, um, currently DSMET is only available at diagnosis. So when you have that conversation with your medical provider that, okay, your A1C is this, we've done some other tests, we, we um, understand that you have diabetes. That is the point where we want that referral over to education with a diabetes educator. Um, the exception would be if there's some sort of change in your diagnosis. So maybe you've had 15 years of managing your diabetes and then on year 16, you're struggling with your current medication and maybe you had to add insulin, for example. That would be a change to your diagnosis and that would open up your DSMET opportunity. So you could go back and get uh, additional education, particularly around now managing, for example, with insulin. Or once you become a Medicare beneficiary, you can also have this education opportunity again, even if you were previously diagnosed with diabetes. So I know that there is some legislature 
in in uh, in the works right now to change this so that it is not just available only within that first year of diagnosis because that's really hard for a lot of people to um, get kind of in that mindset of okay I need I need to train myself I need education I need supports to work through this new diagnosis so we know that the DSMET education tends to fall through within that first year. So the hope is that new legislation will allow that to extend and it's not, it won't be a requirement for someone who's just been newly diagnosed. As I mentioned, this is a Medicare benefit and most private insurance companies also will cover this. So you would pay your copay um, with that diabetes educator, um, but then the rest of the cost would be covered with your insurance. And you're going to see this little note all the time on these next couple of slides. Get a referral from your primary, primary care provider. Do it. Get the referral. <laughs> and we see a lot of benefit. The research on the DSMET benefit shows, particularly for those who have Medicare as their insurance, they go to the hospital less. They spend less time visiting emergency rooms because of, of diabetes complications, and they tend to spend less money uh, fairly significantly, you know, more than $800 per year in uh, healthcare spending because they're better able to manage on their own. And I've got this little sad face on the slide because in 2019, only 5% of Medicare enrollees that had diabetes use this benefit. Um, so I would love to see this get up to even like 50%. I know 2020 is about to end, so maybe in 2021, anyone who um, gets newly diagnosed, we can really push this and invite providers to refer their patients, even without their patients having to ask. So this is one type of education. The next type of education I'm going to talk about is called medical nutrition therapy. Now, you don't have to necessarily complete medical nutrition therapy within your first year of diagnosis. Um, what the language says is within the first year of referral. So if you get a referral and you've had diabetes maybe for three years, but it's your first time being referred to MNT, then you would still get the full three hours of education. This is also a Medicare benefit and most private insurances will cover this as well. And this is specific for diabetes care, um, which is great because we um, do have quite a, quite a large um, population that have diabetes. So this is important for them to get this education. But you still have to get a referral from your primary care provider. Okay. Now, if you have had diabetes and it's been longer than one year, you can still continue on with your DSMET and your MNT education. And someone's trying to call me, so that is gonna be put away. <laughs> Sorry about that. So with that continue, continuing education of your diabetes care, both DSMET and MNT provide you two hours per year MNT is based on a, or excuse me, uh, DSMET is based on a calendar year. Um, MNT is just based on usually a continuing cycle. So if you start in April, um, in theory, you get until the not following April to get your two hours in. Same thing, these are Medicare benefits and most private insurances cover it, but you still have to get that referral. And so I'm hoping that by sharing this and kind of pounding the referral pit into your brains, that this will be something um, that if you haven't already taken any of these education tools, you will maybe explore them now. So DSMET and MNT are complementary services. You can take them at the same, you know, within the same year. Most insurances don't pay for both types of education on the same day, which again is also being worked out with this new legislation that you insurances would cover if you had MNT training and then you had DSMET training on the same day. Currently, that's not the case, but the hope is that in the future it, it will uh, be covered. So DSMET, what this is, is you are getting 
education from a certified diabetes care and education specialist. The terminology used to be a certified diabetes educator or a CDE. Um, they've just updated the credentialing title, but the information you're getting is still the same. So you're focusing on more general topics about how are you coping? This is a huge, big shift to your life of having diabetes, managing with diet, exercise, possibly medications. They will work with you on general healthy eating, ways to be active, looking at self-monitoring. So are you taking your med medication on schedule? How are you doing with testing your blood sugar? How are you doing uh, injecting insulin? helping you reduce risk. So a big conversation is usually about sick days. So we're getting into winter now. So the risk of flu and general uh, fall and winter colds, head colds is coming up. So when you have those sick days, your blood sugar numbers tend to be off. Generally, they're a little higher than normal, but you also maybe don't feel great because you're sick. And so trying to manage your risk of do, how much medication do you need on sick days versus when you're healthier. Um, so they will help you with that. On the medical nutrition therapy side, you're working with a registered dietitian or a registered dietitian nutritionist. And they're providing the individual individualized diet and diabetes education. So these would be topics like how many calories per day do you need? Are they going to recommend any uh, weight changes. So if you need to lose weight to help manage your diabetes, they can help put that regimen together. They can walk you through meal planning, um, carb counting. They're able to do a little bit more individualized education um, just for your personal needs. And again, these are meant to be complementary services. You don't have to pick one or the other. You can have uh, both of these types of education and it provides you a lot of education towards managing your diabetes. So I just talked a whole lot and I want to hear from you in the chat box. Have you ever uh, used DSMET training or MNT training? Let us know. And I, while I do that, I'm going to take a sip of water. So another education option is what's called the Diabetes Self-Management Program. This is a six-week program. You usually meet once a week, and it's recommended for those with type 2 diabetes. This is written out of Stanford University. This is a curriculum that's presented nationwide. In my area in particular, it's usually in coordination with health departments. But I know in my area, we have one hospital that also teaches it. And this is a great program for anyone who's had diabetes for a while, because they do focus on the general things that you might see with the DSMET. So it'd be things like, how are you eating? Is, you know, are you doing well exercise-wise? How are you coping? Um, there might be some challenges during some weeks. Um, so again, if you have ever attended a DSMP program, let us know in the chat box, in particular where, I'm curious, because I know at least in my area, like I said, it's usually health departments, but I'm curious if anyone has ever attended one through another agency, because that's always good for us to know too. Now, I don't know if we have anyone on our call today that is either has friends or family or knows a young person who has diabetes. But I did wanna mention that there are a lot of camps for youth with diabetes um, around the country, but also within Illinois. So the American Diabetes Association has six camps designed for youth who have type one diabetes. I know in my area, we have one out in Monticello at 4-H Memorial Camp that I was gonna be able to tour the summer and then the pandemic hit, so I didn't get to tour it. But um, there's also a basketball camp with sites in Illinois and, and other places around the country. It's called Slam Dunk for Diabetes. And it is available for youth with both type one or type two. And then in Southern Illinois, um, there's a Camp Beta uh, for youth with type one. 
So if you know of any youth that have diabetes, whether it's type one or type two, these are really great opportunities for them to meet their peers that also have diabetes because they have um, a whole new outlook. They're, they are different from their non-diabetes peers, but it's great for them to know that there are others um, that are also seeing the, the challenges and the successes that they are too. All right, so now we're gonna shift into the rest of our presentation, which is on free and low cost resources. So depending on what type of medication that you use, I do wanna refer you to the American Diabetes InsulinHelp.org website. And what this does is it connects you with uh, insulin providers and medical uh, ph pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers, that's the word I wanted. And a lot of these insulin producers have programs designed. So if you are struggling financially to get your insulin, a lot of times they will, you, you have to fill out a form. So there is, a, is an additional step, but they help cover some of, some of, or a lot of your insulin um, and they deliver it to you. And so feel free to share that resource. If you know anyone who's struggling with their medication resources, um, because we, we wanna make sure that insulin is not what is, is preventing you from living healthy with diabetes. If you are struggling with balance or nerve damage due to your diabetes and you're noticing it in your extremities, so like your hands or your feet, Medicare does cover therapeutic shoes and inserts. And these are really helpful for individuals with diabetes because um, when we see nerve damage uh, to the feet, we sometimes step on things that we maybe uh, might feel that puncture or that scratch. So if we step on, I'm gonna be really dramatic, if we step on a nail, um, most of us are gonna feel that, that puncture wound, but sometimes with your diabetes, if you are having nerve damage to your feet, for example, you may not notice that. Um, so having the therapeutic shoes is also a barrier, so it helps that. It also uh, provides co more comfort and decreases pressure on, on the feet, so we don't see tissue damage. So a lot of you may be familiar that one of the risk factors with having diabetes is amputation. And so to lose your feet, um, having these therapeutic shoes can really help provide support and comfort to your skin and to your tissues so that you are lowering that risk of tissue damage and potential for uh, amputation. And so Medicare covers per calendar year a pair of custom shoes with inserts, or if you were to need uh, an extra deep kind of shoe, they will also cover that and provide a set of three inserts. I know in my area, so Decatur, we have a prosthetic shop um, and company that also fits people for uh, shoes for diabetes. Um, again, here you are still going to have to get a referral from your primary care provider. So if you think that you might benefit from shoes, uh, let your provider know that you want to explore that. Exercise is one of our free and low cost resources. So um, I have uh, one of our dietitians um, in, in the area that I cover. When we co-teach classes, she usually talks about exercise is free insulin. So as you may be aware, insulin is the hormone that helps to lower our blood glucose or our blood sugar and help it keep it in a more normal range. And for those who have diabetes, part of the health uh, issues are that Insulin is not either produced very much or doesn't function very well in our bodies. And so exercise actually helps ins improve your insulin sensitivity. So your cells recognize insulin better. They take insulin into the cells and help your body have energy to do that. And so any type of fitness or exercise that you can take throughout your day or throughout your week is going to be important for managing your diabetes. And really walking, and there's so much research on benefits of walking. So if you are able to walk, this is a great one. I know we're getting into colder weather. So hopefully 
you have um, some somewhere indoors that you might be able to walk. I know for us, we have a, a round room in our office. So I sometimes will just walk laps around that room. It's not very big. So I have to do a lot of laps to, to get to my, my mile, but um, it's, it's useful. So think about any indoor locations that you might have. Now, if you're gonna have to come indoors to maybe a gym, now that may not be free, but um, hopefully they maybe have some low cost, uh, not scholarships, but subscription options for you. So tell me in the comments, what are some of your favorite exercises? Um, I know for me, I'm a big fan of dance fitness. So I've, <laughs> I've kind of moved, some, moved the carpet out of the way. I put on my TV and I will um, do, I know Zumba was really popular a couple of years ago. I don't know if it still is, but any dance fitness, I'm a big fan of that. But uh, walking is great. I know Lisa, our, our moderator today, she's a big fan of hiking. Um, tell us in the comments what kinds of things that you like to do for being active. For those of us that are interested in connecting with other people that have diabetes, and possibly for people in certain stages of life with diabetes, online communities are a great way to explore that. So the one in particular that I want to mention is the College Diabetes Network. And this is intended for college age youth that are shifting particularly from high school. So they're coming away from their family home and in theory out into the world. And so that is a big change for them. And this network is there to provide education and support and connect other college age individuals with diabetes so that they can be supporting each other, learn about other ways to manage maybe how do you talk to your roommate now that you're in college about having diabetes and um, getting support from them if you were to maybe have a low blood sugar episode or um, were needing help uh, on a variety of things. So that, that, that one, I was really excited to see that that um, network is still going. Of course, the American Diabetes Association has an online support community. And so you can join in with the expert community. So you would have questions answered by diabetes experts. And then you can also do the peer community. So if you have questions about um, anything that you think your fellow uh, people with diabetes could support you with or talk to you about, there's also that route. And then a couple others that I'm not as familiar with, but there's Two Diabetes, uh, which is another just online community and D-Life, which I've heard of before. So I'm, I'm excited that it still exists. And if you have other online communities that you use, again, this, this session, I really want this to be a sharing opportunity for everyone that's attending. So if you have online communities that you participate in that you wanna share, feel free to add those to the chat box. Um, I really want this to be a sharing, sharing lesson for everyone. Magazines, who doesn't love a good magazine, right? So, <laughs> um, so from, Everything that I can tell, current issues of all five of the magazines that are on this slide are now digital. So you can still find print copies of older issues. So if your library has magazine issues or you want to search, you know, eBay or uh, go online to find older issues, you can find them in paper. But currently, all these issues are either digital or um, online reading. But um, I know diabetes self-management has some really nice materials. I usually refer to them for some, some, for some information. Diabetes Forecast is another great one that I've used. Um, I have not used the other three, but I was excited for the Diabetic Gourmet magazine. So for those of you that really enjoy cooking and being in your kitchens, I think that would be a great one to explore. Again, if I missed any magazines, type in the chat box, tell me what other uh, magazines that you read about. For those of you that enjoy listening, so if you like the idea of kind of a radio show that you can listen to, podcasts would be a great resource. So if we recorded this and put it up, it would kind of be like a podcast as well. Um, so a couple that I want to mention, uh, one is Sound Bites by Melissa Joy Dobbins. She is a dietitian and a certified diabetes educator. And she is a uh, out of Illinois, I believe the Chicago area. 
And so I think that's great. If you want to listen to someone who's local, not every episode does she talk about diabetes, but she does have some episodes that are devoted to diabetes care. And so if you want to check out someone that's local and has that experience of working with individuals with diabetes, she's a great one um, to check out and listen to. There's also Megan Munez uh, with Type 2 and You. And she is a, again, this, this, the Certified Diabetes Educator credential has kind of lengthened. So she is a Certified Diabetes Care and Education Specialist, um, same general idea. And so she provides a variety of topics and discussions for those with type 2 diabetes. And then out of Australia, this was, this was kind of fun to listen to because it didn't have a typical American accent. Um, Angela Blair hosts Let's Talk Diabetes. And so, as I said, this is out of Australia. So she brings in experts uh, from that area and has a variety of discussions around a whole lot of different topics of diabetes. So those are some, some ones to check out. If I have missed any podcasts that anyone enjoys listening to around diabetes or nutrition, again, type those in the chat box so everyone can see. Um, I bet we have some good ones that I just haven't found out about yet. As for support groups, um, these are, I know these have probably been challenging right now because of the pandemic. So if you have not been able to go to a support group, you might consider using the online communities right now until we're able to do more in-person meetings. But support groups are a whole lot of good um, in terms of bringing you again together to people that have diabetes and know the challenges and the struggles and the successes that you can have with this health condition. Um, we have support groups through our hospitals, through our clinics. I know some of our extension educators around the state have occasionally offered support groups for those with diabetes. Um, Lisa, I'm gonna pick, pick your brain here for a little bit. Uh, what, do you have any support groups in your, in your counties? We have, I know we do have one in locally in Montgomery County, our health departments. That's the first place I tell people to go is check out our local health departments because a lot of ours do have support groups. I mean, right now it's more difficult, but yeah, that'd be, that'd be probably the closest one here. I know Hillsboro, we have somebody on the call here from Hillsboro and I know they have one at the health department. Ooh, that's good to know. I never really think about health departments having support groups because I know the ones in my area don't. So that's exciting. That's good. Or the hospital. So if, and, and support groups are, can, can be a whole lot of things. So you might have guest speakers, so you can learn more about not just diabetes, but also maybe other conditions that are related to it. So maybe heart disease is the topic one, one month because uh, heart disease is a risk factor with having diabetes. Maybe it's a kidney doctor to come in or talk and talk about that. Um, variety of different things that, that you might hear with support groups. And then you also have support groups that provide that community support. So you might have a, a listening session or a venting session if you need it, or those times when things are really uh, hard for you. And depending on your personality, it might be hard to rely on other people, but hopefully as you get to know them, you'll be more comfortable being vulnerable and uh, comforted knowing that you have other people in your corner. Now we have lots of online reading. So the internet is a wealth of information and it is also a bottomless pit of information that may not be so uh, reliable. And so when we talk about reliable information, we generally go for websites that end in .gov or .org because these are gonna be either government or organizational uh, resources that are gonna be more reliable than your .com type websites. And so some ones that you might consider reading about would be from the National Institutes of Health. They host the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Disorders, excuse me, diseases. And they have a lot of information on what diabetes is, general risk factors, how do you diagnose diabetes, um, information about medication. So it's generally a good kind of encyclopedia type of resource. So a lot of these may not have support group information, but they are gonna have information 
to remind you about what, what is this health condition and how do we manage it generally. The Centers for Disease Control also has information. And as I mentioned before, the uh, I'm getting all of my programs mixed up right now. So we have the, the Diabetes Prevention Program for those who have prediabetes, that is a CDC curriculum. And so that is through them. And so that's a great one to, to check out. They have a lot of good diabetes resources. Now on the association side, we have the American Diabetes Association, of course, but the American Heart Association has good information around diabetes because heart disease is a risk factor for those who have diabetes, and actually the other way around as well. And then the National Kidney Foundation has some really nice information also about diabetes, because again, diabetes, uh, having diabetes is a risk factor for developing kidney disease. And so we really want to make sure that everyone is aware that diabetes isn't just about your blood sugar. It also impacts other organs in your body if it's not well managed. And so if it comes to that, um, you know, we want you to have these resources to help you navigate that part of your diagnosis too. You might also look into some of the industry resources that exist. So there's a lot of diabetes uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers. There's a lot of companies that manufacture maybe testing information or testing materials. So your insulin pumps or your continuous blood glucose monitors, uh, testing strips, uh, all, all, so all sorts of the equipment that uh, is important in managing your diabetes. So Lilly is one that's very popular. Uh, Novo Nordisk is another one. They all have public websites. So of course they have their company websites, but if you want information around diabetes and some of the inf information and products that they offer, they also have their public websites to kind of help you walk through how of course they can help with their products, but just providing general information about what diabetes is. And in some cases, particularly for companies that work primarily on improving lives for those with type one. They might even have some updates on some of the cool innovations that are going on in helping promote uh, health for type one, um, di <coughs> excuse me, diabetes. And then there's also Jocelyn diabetes, which I mentioned because we have one in my area in Decatur as a partnership with one of our hospitals and they um, have diabetes educators that can do some of the MNT and the DSMET that we talked about earlier. Um, so don't always discount the industry resources. I know there's a lot of concern that, um, you know, because they make a lot of money that they're giving us false information, but they're, they're trying to provide us with accurate information about the products that they use. Yes, they're trying to sell us things too, but they also are able to provide the, the quality information to help us understand what diabetes is and how it impacts us. Anybody a fan of using apps, so whether that's on their tablet or on their phone, or I guess even just through a website, um, tell us in the chat box. I'm really curious what apps you find helpful. So I picked a couple. So the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is my credentialing agency as a dietitian, uh, they have a whole section devoted, their food and nutrition magazine, that is devoted to reviewing apps because these are so popular right now. And so I found a couple that are diabetes specific and had really good scores based on what the dietitians rated them as. So I have not participated or worked with any of these apps, so I can't speak to how well they work, but the dietitians that reviewed them said they worked really well. So nourishingly, is one tracking app and then Dario. And these can be tracking apps specific to tracking your blood sugar. So if it rises and falls throughout the day, it could be a food tracking kind of app. So you're maybe looking at how many carbohydrates at each meal and snack did I take in. You might be looking at weight management. So if you're concerned about uh, weight in managing your diabetes, there's apps that would help you keep track of, of your weight. Um, all sorts of things that you can do. Of course, pen and paper is perfect too, but for those of us that want to try the digital route, um, these are some options that you might look into. And of course, books and cookbooks. Um, 
more so before the pandemic, but we were seeing a lot of reports that cookbook sales keep going up. And that's great. I, I, that's one of the, the things that I love is promoting cooking more at home. Um, it's a skill that not a lot of people maybe have gotten passed down from generation to generation anymore. So this is something that I try to do in my classes is really promote hands-on cooking. And so I, I'm always excited when I see that there are reports of cookbook sales that are still trending upward. And you don't have to buy your books. You can always go to your local library. I know uh, in Illinois, we have a statewide library system. So I actually just uh, put in a request for a book earlier today. So that book, even though it isn't at my local library currently, it will get delivered in a couple of days to my local library where I can pick it up. And so that is a great option. If you're not seeing the cookbooks or the diabetes education books that you want, check out uh, the entire network of library systems in your area because they may be able to uh, drop off books uh, to you or cookbooks. You can look through those and uh, find recipes that you like or want to try out or just learn more about uh, caring for diabetes. You might even look at some uh, like biographies, so books about people who have had diabetes. That can always be very reassuring to know that people um, also live with this and that you know, you're doing as well as you can in this particular moment. And then towards the end of our, our lesson here today, I just wanna remind about free recipe websites and I'm just gonna promote all the extension ones that we have. Um, so in the handout with this lesson, I have included, I think there's nine or 10 different university extensions around the country that have a variety of really awesome recipe websites. They show you the pictures of them so you can see what they are. Because we are university extensions around the country, a lot of times our recipes are designed to be very budget conscious. And so they don't have 20 ingredients. You, you know, we use very uh, cost friendly ingredients and we try to think about uh, things that people like, particularly in that area. So if you are gonna go to visit the Dinner Tonight website at a Texas extension, then you might see more um, Texas inspired foods, more uh, South, Southwestern style foods. Here in Illinois, we have our Recipes for Diabetes website and also our Fiesta of Flavors website, uh, which is designed for more Hispanic style cooking. Uh, both are available in English and Spanish, so you can do the translation depending on which language you prefer. Um, Iowa has a really nice one, the Spend Smart, Eat Smart website. Uh, the one that I came across recently, as I was telling Lisa earlier, was out of Mississippi's extension, and they have a really nice recipe website there too. So all of those will be included in the handout for this lesson, so you can uh, get that uh, available and you can check out whichever ones. I know we have one participant uh, from New York, so you can always check out and see what uh, your nearby state extensions have there. And then I'm going to do another shameless plug, but uh, Illinois Extension, we provide a lot of digital resources. So for those of you that are on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, really come find us. Um, we are around the table. That's why we choose that, that, that term. So we are the Family Finance and Food Program within Illinois Extension. And so come find us on Facebook at, at uh, around the table. We are going to be pushing out, and I guess November is almost here, so we're going to be pushing out a November social media campaign for the entire month of November around diabetes because November is National Diabetes Month, and so we want to provide this opportunity for individuals who have diabetes to learn more about uh, their health condition and get support and resources and all sorts of good things, so, so come join us. Of course, there are other social media accounts that you can follow. The American Diabetes Association is a great one. I believe there's actually a specific page for the Illinois chapter of the American Diabetes Association. So if you want to see things that are happening locally around the state, you could follow that page. Um, Lisa, any, any favorite, I know I'm putting you on the spot again, any favorite social media around diabetes care that you are familiar with? 
Not around IB. I was trying to think. I'm, I'm a big fan of Instagram, and that's one with all the pictures. Um, I can do a shameless plug of ours. We do have an Instagram account called Dash of Wellness. So if you look that up, and that one, it takes a lot of our diabetes recipes and does step-by-step um, pictures with it. So it shows how to make it step-by-step, -step, and then it links to a printable recipe, which gives diabetes information. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any on Instagram or other social medias. So that's the big one with extension I can think of. But yeah. Well, and and if you would put your uh, Dash of Wellness URL in the chat box so people want to check that out, they have that yeah. available. That's a good idea. And so that brings us to mostly the end of our lesson today. And I really want to remind you, use the resources that we've talked about in this session. Use resources from your medical providers, your diabetes educator, um, so that you have the tools and the resources that you need to manage your diabetes well. It is a big undertaking. It is not easy every day. And so we really wanna be here to support you with that. And so just to go through a little bit, um, if you wanna sign up for a texting program, our whole around the table family has our extending wellness texting program. So you only get two texts per week. It's not um, anything that you are obligated to do. It's just something that we want to provide you. And it goes beyond diabetes care. So topics around finances, food, of course, uh, caregiving topics, brain health, a variety of different things that uh, you can use. And if at any time you say, yeah, this isn't for me, you can always um, stop getting those messages. And then I'm gonna shift over to Lisa because I know that she's gonna do our outro before, um, or I guess, actually, let me come back here. We'll, we'll do questions, I guess. Yeah, you had a few questions, Caitlin. Okay, so one of them, the first one we got asked and it, um, would it be possible for, that, for us, the participants, to get the slides to share with others at the end of the presentation? She'd love to share this information for their diabetes support group members. Yeah, so the everything in the slideshow is going to be in the handout that will be available to you. So that, um, and Lisa will talk a little bit more about how we go about getting the print materials to you. But yes, everything about uh, the support groups and the diabetes resources and all the recipe books and the information about the different education methods. So the diabetes prevention program, the medical nutrition therapy, all of that. Uh, will definitely be in there and you are free to share that with everyone that that you know that wants it <laughs> all right here's another one okay so do the recipes when you're talking about the books do the recipes include carb counts in the books in the cookbooks so it's going to vary based on the cookbook but i would imagine that any cookbook that is specifically written towards an audience that has diabetes is going to have the carb count information so depending on if you are doing direct carb counting or you're doing kind of an exchange system, that information should be there. Now, are the extension recipes going to have that? In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. Um, but there are a lot of software that's free. So you would have to take the time if you didn't have uh, nutrition information for a recipe, you would have to take the time to enter it. But there are software out there that lets you do that too. Um, but yes, most, most of the cookbooks that are written towards diabetes recipes are going to have that carb count information. Great. Okay. And the last question I saw here in the chat box is, do you recommend a low carb and or keto diet to manage type 2 diabetes? So the keto diet or ketogenic diet um, is kind of a, a modification of the Atkins diet. So it's very low carb. Um, diet, very high in protein and fat. And the, the research around keto as a treatment for diabetes is mixed from what I have read. So in some research, it is helpful for those who have diabetes and managing their blood sugar. In others, it doesn't make a difference. Um, so do I recommend it? What I recommend is talking with a diabetes educator or a registered dietitian who can actually look one-on-one -on -one with you um, and see and help you monitor and see how that works for you. Um, Lisa, anything to add on that? Because I know we, you've done some of the 
uh, diet lessons recently, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and I agree. I think the research is still pretty mixed on it, and that would be it. You really want to know what's best for you. So like you said, talking to your dietitian, talking to your doctors, the people who know you best, and it can, I mean, every, every diet's different for every person, so... Yeah, there's no solid, solid research yet on keto diets and diabetes. And it, and it does make sense because generally we see a lot of individuals who have diabetes really limiting their carb, carbohydrate intake, um, which is helpful in managing their diabetes, but we still need carbohydrates uh, to function. Um, so I don't want anyone to go too low. So it really is important if you want to look at starting or changing your diet uh, I know medical doctors don't have the same kind of nutrition education that dietitians do or diabetes educators do. And so um, get that referral, um, go have an appointment with a dietitian um, and they're gonna really be able to help you tailor. And if you wanna try out a keto diet, it's gonna be a lot healthier to do it under supervision um, with a, a dietitian because they're gonna be able to help you monitor, make sure you don't have any ketones developing, which would be a sign that your body's not getting enough energy. Um, so there, there, there's a, a lot of answers to that very simple question. <laughs> All righty. I don't see any more questions, but I think we'll wrap it up here. Um, I'll talk a little bit about like Caitlin said about receiving the information from today, you're gonna re receive an email following today's presentation, which is gonna include a survey. So it's a link to a survey. Within that survey, we're gonna ask you to enter your email if you'd like to receive program materials. Um, you'll receive your program materials within seven business days of the webinar. Again, please, we want you to complete the survey within the next three days, business days or so, just to make sure we have everyone's emails and we get it out to you. So ideally, if you could do it right after this, that's going to be the quickest way if you receive that email. I know I forget things really easy. So when you receive that email, click on it and make sure to put your email so you do get those handouts within about a seven business days or a week. Um, if you like today's presentation, please think about joining us next week as nutrition and wellness educator Kristen Bagnonas talks about fat, sodium, and sugar. Oh, my. Um, <laughs> learn about different types of fat which ones you should limit, um, how to include more of the good stuff. And we're going to walk, walk you through strategies to enhancing flavors without while well, keeping your sodium and sugar low, which is going to be little tips and tricks we can give to you to really get that flavor in without all that sugar and salt. Yeah. Well, thank you for everyone for joining us. Caitlin, do you have anything else you'd like to add? <laughs> We are, I'm, I'm so pleased for those of you who have joined us just today, um, like Lisa said, feel free to join us for the remaining two webinars in our series uh, over the next couple of Wednesdays. And uh, be sure to take care of yourself. This is a, a rough time even without uh, diabetes. So uh, everyone take care of yourself and have a great rest of your day. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.